What up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bellcast. You introed that very boring. It should be Bellcast. There we go. There we go. Booyah. So this last weekend, I did something that was super exciting for me. Um, it was my own birthday present to myself. And since these classes don't come along very often, that's why I took it in January and not in November, which is when my birthday is. And it Happy was- Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday again. And it was called Tactical Trauma Response Course. Okay. And that's pretty much the civilian version of TCCC. You know what T triple C is? Absolutely. What is it? T triple C mm-hmm. is T. Uh, so that's tactical, consultant, caring um, of consumers. Wow, that's really good. Thank you. Good job. It's so wrong. So it's actually <laughs> uh, tactical. Got that right. Combat casualty care. Oh, so, so this close. is <laughs> so uh, just some backstory about it. Well, I guess this is my my mindset of what made me want to. Uh, even get into this it's so fitting because you have the right pants i have my little camo pants yeah can you guys see them oh yeah i can't see them yeah so uh some backstory as to why i wanted to take it you know like in these days you always have not always unfortunately but there are a lot of crazy shit that goes on in the world with like the mass shooters and just people doing crazy dumb shit all the time right yeah i don't know if it's these days it's kind of always been happening but it's it's happening more and more yeah and so you have like the the shooting at that country um, concert in, in Vegas. We had Sandy Hook um, in San Bernardino. They had that guy the, going to look at that government building. Yeah, the movie theater after watching, uh, what was it? The Batman movie or something? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, as of recent, there was that one guy that went into a, a church in Texas. Oh. Good thing it's Texas. <clears throat> and then like 10 people all pulled out guns. And then the one guy, he's a firearms instructor. He put him down immediately. So that was really cool. But the other part of it that people aren't focusing on is the immediate first aid. Because just because you get shot doesn't mean you're gonna die. Yeah, I think for us, the 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 civilians, for me in my own head, I I could be a party of one here. Yeah. But once I hear that news, I automatically assume, okay, cool. The rest of the story is taken care of because the cops show up, ambulance, firemen, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I don't even think about that. After. Yeah, because the sexy part is, oh no, someone got shot. So that's what's going to get the views and the clicks on the news channels. That's what, yeah, that's provocative. But what the important part of it is just because you get shot, it doesn't mean you're going to die. So there's a lot of the back end, the life saving part of it. And just because you don't have a de- deadly shot doesn't mean you're going to live either. Exactly. Right. So there's a whole back end to it that people aren't focusing on. Like me. And I think because of, since I grew up in the Boy Scouts, I understand how important first aid is. Like you always see and They encounter. really emphasized uh, first aid. Yeah, it's, it's like, cause like you go in the, in the woods, right? What happens if you get bit by a snake or you touch poison ivy or someone breaks their bones? So like- This is a dumb question. Um, snakes live in the forest? Yeah. Fuck, I grew up in the city, clearly. Where do you think snakes live? Like in deserts and like, um, I don't know, like more dry, warm areas. There are multiple species of snakes. Mm-hmm. So there's snakes that live in the desert, in the forest, in water, water snakes. Oh, right. What the fuck? Anaconda? There's a lot of, yeah, in the jungle. There's, okay. there's salt. I'm wa- stupid. They even have saltwater snakes. Saltwater fucking yeah. snakes? Yeah, there's Get all kinds, there's all kinds of snakes. So yeah, uh, I think because I grew up and I kind of understood that, uh, like the first aid part of Boy Scouts. Um, and then in the Marine Corps, you get taught really basic like CPR and stuff like that. So I think that's the part where I was like, you know what? I don't feel like I've been training a lot and shooting and being good at a better marksman and even like protecting the home. And like, if someone comes in my house, I have a lot of confidence I can put him down before he inflicts damage on my family. But I don't have that much confidence in trauma, saving. first aid, life saving. So that's why I wanted to take the class because I feel like it's all about balance. Okay. Yeah, so that's why why I took the class. Okay. And so this part I thought it was super, super cool because uh, in the tactical field care sector, what they're doing is they're taking methods that have worked and evolved in the military and then they're applying it how it would work in the civilian world. So back in the day, remember the the TV show MASH? Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the concept back then was to, if there's someone that is hurt, 
we put them on in a helicopter and we bring them to the hospital. Right. As much as we can. So you're, you you got all those like, no man left behind, right? The minute someone's shot, they're starting to drag them off the field. That was the concept. And what they realized is 90% of patients, they make it to the hospital, but they pass away. So all the hospital medics and doctors are like, what's the point of bringing them here if we can't even save them? So they're just pretty much uh, empty bodies, right? Or, em or dead bodies. So they developed this thing called cash, which is a hospital, but it's more on the field. So let's bring it closer. And then they still realize- so now MASH needs to be called cash? Yeah, it's like core area, like service hospital or something like that. And then um, from that point, it was still the, it was still, not surviving the, the soldiers. So now they're like, we need to bring the medicine. Like we need to arm the medics on the field. We got to make, shit. we got to make them nurses pretty much. We need to put, instead of bringing people to the nurses and the doctors, we need to try to put nurses on the field. So they need to know how to fight, how to shoot, how to do all that. Uh, or not, they just need to know how not, to avoid. Not literal nurses, but the nurse skill set. let's put it into a soldier. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. but still there's, I mean, not all of them have that skill set, or they do. Like every single soldier is equipped with the same knowledge? Uh, now they are. Oh, so before, sick. So before it was like this. Before it's like, let's say you have, I'm just talking about advanced people. Like let's say you have a SEAL team, right? And then you have one combat medic that's like a freak and he could pull, run IVs. He can do all He's kinds MacGyver. of stuff. MacGyver with medicine. And you only have that guy. Everyone relies on him. Now everyone is T triple C certified plus him. Okay, cool. So now that's everyone- Because I was wondering like if he's on the field and then he unfortunately- dies yeah <laughs> then we're back to scenario one again yeah yeah. yeah. so now you have everyone that's t triple c certified so everyone is at the level of a basic like trauma nurse e like navy marines everyone has that training if now. you're on the field yeah 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 oh, like if cool. that's required by your field that's awesome so they have that now and yeah. that's uh and then so in the class that i took they took that knowledge and they brought it over here okay so um that's what i learned um this past week and i'm really really happy and excited about it yeah, cool. Yeah, no, you sound very excited. We were texting back and forth because you were away in Vegas. And well, Nevada, not Vegas. You were in Nevada for two days. Boulder City, yeah. And we missed you terribly. Thank but you. you were you kept checking in because that's just how cute we are. We keep checking in with each other. Yeah. And then you would tell me like, oh, I just learned this. And did you know this? And like, because it was so broken up, like we really haven't talked about it too much because like you came back and then it was like, you came back late, you knocked out, and it was like business as usual the next day, and we've been just kind of running this whole week. Yeah. So now I want to sit with you, haha, <laughs> because we're already sitting, and um, I kind of want to hear like what you learn, and then we can share it, you know? Yeah, because this stuff is really helpful to everyone. Yeah. Not just in a- I don't think I know anything. Yeah, just not even in just like a tactical threat type of scenario. Yeah. Um, also, this TCCC type stuff, it applies not only to just shooters, it applies to if you're in a car accident, like if your car is about to explode or you get into a big accident and you have a shard of glass like in, in your arm and you're bleeding out, or if you're going camping and you get attacked by a bear. Like or a the, fire, a campfire, you said? Campfire, like this applies to- It's very practical. All and, kinds of stuff. Yeah. Like stuff that, like even one of the scenarios, so like what was really cool is day one, it's all lecture so we study notes and then there's a presentation slideshow day two was i would consider like lab where you're running through things so one of the scenarios was even um we're all just sitting here hey you guys you guys are at a house party and then bang bang you hear two things outside a drive-by action right so you don't know it's a super loud thing and that's where how i grew up it's a drive-by someone's got shot possibly sure. but that's how threats happen and you don't know what they are and right. so you have to start the evidence and the clue collection oh, it's on, a your, on your own. No, so in that scenario, oh. it was a water heater that exploded. Oh, fuck. And then because it's a water heater that exploded, there's still shrapnel. So two people got hit and there's metal parts into their body and they're bleeding out. Oh my Lord, so that happens? Anything could happen. Okay. Yeah, like you can be walking next to a telephone line and it falls on you. Okay. Like anything can happen. So that's True. what I liked about the class where it wasn't just like, okay, scenario one, you're like army crawling, you're putting camel paint on your face. It's not like the movies. Yeah. It was, we constantly ran through scenarios and they explain them as if it happened and it's not the clues that you would want. You know, like that one was so cool because it was like, bang, bang. Everyone in the class, because they're tactical, everyone thinks, oh, gunshot wound. They go outside and so you can't just assume. So you go outside and the first thing you want to do is communicate with the patient. Hi, what's your name and what happened? 
if they can, hopefully they can tell you they're not unconscious. Oh, hi, my name is Will and the water, we we're trying to fix it and it broke and I got hit, whatever, you know, so it's stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's really cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I wanted you to kind of test my knowledge because I didn't grow. I didn't, I didn't get any of that training that you got. Yeah. Like all I got was whatever was taught in school, which was just for earthquakes. What is the, what did you get taught in school? You just have to go underneath. Um, you either stand on the doorway or um, you, I'm about to sneeze, sorry. Uh, it went away. Or you crawl underneath your desk. And what do you do when you crawl underneath your desk? You tuck in all your stuff and you just kind of get into like a little caterpillar position. Someone wasn't even paying attention in elementary school already. Ha already, baby. So if you're underneath one of those desks, yeah. this is the way I was taught in elementary school. You're supposed to hold one of the legs of oh, the table. Oh, you're right. Because I don't remember can, that far. Could, I'm old, baby. So am I. But the table, because the table could slide away from you, and the other hand is supposed to be on the back of your neck. You're right. And then you you cover your ears with their elbow, because uh, sometimes a book can fall out, a light bulb can fall out, and you don't want it to hit you in the neck when your table spins around and it paralyzes you. Damn, I didn't get any of that in elementary school. What do they teach you? Just the get picture, under the table, but the cover, and yeah. then hold on to the thing. That was the end. Oh, Maybe damn. they did explain it, but I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? It you, was public school, and yeah, I went to public school too. Okay, well, I didn't go to an uh, affluent public school. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I want you to, I want you to quiz me. Okay, so um, let's see. Do you want me to just start running through the scenarios and see what you would do? Fuck. <laughs> oh, you might just start from the bottom, like little basics and stuff. Of course, I don't know shit. All right, cool. Let's say you uh, you run up on a person, right? I run up. What does that mean? I run up. Uh, how how else am I supposed to say? It? Like I run, I run up. Like yeah. I'm okay. Like you, okay. Run, you, you, you. I thought you were using slang. No, you, I mean it, it works both ways. Okay. When you run up on someone, usually you are running up on someone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I'm nervous. I think I'm nervous. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to like, fail. Yeah. I, I don't mean by all oh, running up and then you're at a disco club and you're fucking doing electric slide. <laughs> I'm talking about like, yeah, you run up on someone. Okay. And then this person is uh, gasping for air and their entire left leg is blow, blown off below the Fuck knee. Yo, that's base. This is basic for you? What, I, I thought he was just gasping for air and we we're going to end it there. No, no, I'm just going to give you, I'm just going to give you this. What, what do you do or what do you think you're supposed to do? This guy's gasping for air and it is, it is blown out below his knee. So his, from the knee down, his leg's gone. It's, you see his lower leg on the other side of the street and it's just blood coming out. Okay. So, um, I think I would try to stop that bleeding first. Cause I mean, I'm assuming he's bleeding profusely from his leg. And just kind of learning from my poor meatloaf's experience. But this guy's freaking gasping for air. He needs air. I don't know. I don't know what I would do. That's I mean, you're just asking me. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, asking, I'm already gave you, yeah. you the wrong. I gave you the wrong answer. It feels like. I'm no. I just wanted you to fill in the blanks. Well, I'm trying to, but okay. then now you're correcting it by going. But he's grasping for air. He's oh, grasping I'm not, for I'm air. I'm not correcting. I'm just throwing shit out there. Okay. You'll know when I correct you. You're not. I'm not. You're not correcting right now. Okay. Um. So yeah, I would. I would because of whatever happened with meatloaf like when they were like he's losing blood really rapidly and like he can die just from that yeah um if he's losing it from his leg i feel like oh shit let me let me i don't know take my shirt off or something and try to like what is that thing called like uh like tie Glow sticks <laughs> light show yeah like try to like wrap it to where maybe like i can stop some sort of bleeding I don't know and then if he's gasping for air i've never done cpr i wouldn't even know how to do that I have no idea. So that's what you're going to tell him? Uh, no, hey, I dude, would. Hey, dude, I've never done CPR. No, I think I would. Um, I'm just gonna, Hey, dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my shirt off right now and I'm going to do this. I'm not going to. Uh, no, I would just be like, fuck, dude. And I just hope <laughs> someone's there. <laughs> this was like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, thank God you're here. You're like, fuck, dude. No, I, fuck. Might as, I might as well not be, bro. <laughs> you're like, fuck, your leg's not even on you, bro. <laughs> you know what? You need to get off my back, okay? Because right now, I, know. I have to talk about our first. Our first sponsor. Okay. <laughs> and special thanks to our sponsor, Best Fiends. So Best Fiends is a free download game that you get to play. I actually started playing it and it's really fun. I Finally. See, I see you playing it at night and sometimes I, I see her just over there. I'm like, 
I think she's having too much fun, so I'm gonna start playing Isn't it too. Isn't it cute? It's really cute. So it, you see all these like, there's all these cute little characters, and it's really easy. It's, it's uh, like a little like all these little bugs. Yeah, all you're trying to do is just connect the things that look the same, and you move around. Like flowers or leaves or like water droplets. Yeah, and you get it actually you get competitive with yourself because you're like, oh wait. You, I'm leveling pretty fast. Is there a faster way I can do this? Is the way I can anticipate it? Mm -hmm. So if you're traveling, I think this is a super fun game. If like, you're like, oh, I'm so bored of looking at what everyone's feed is and you want to just do something that stimulates yourself. Or even on the plane, you can play offline. Oh, yeah, you can play offline. So it's super dope. Um, I would highly recommend to download it because it's a free download. And it's just clean of fun. Like you're not like killing things. You're not like any age could play this. Um, it's a good de-stressor for me. Um, it's also good when I'm trying to like, like you said, when I play it at night, yeah. it's because I'm just trying to relax. I had such a stimulating or overly stimulating day yeah. that I'm like, wait, I just want to feel comfortable. I want to feel in this like at Zen and at peace. I want to just relax. Yeah. And it's not too stimulating where it wakes you back up. No, I love it. So I love it. So it's super awesome. Uh, you could download Best Fiends for free at the Apple App Store or Google Play. And that's Fiends, like friends, but without the R. F-I-E-N-D-S. Best Fiends. Thank you. Yay. Okay. Well, um, wow. Thanks for making this a safe space to learn. Okay? The world is not safe. <laughs> no, but this space, because it's not safe, this learning environment should be safe. This glass uh, table can shatter right now. Freaking going to our lakes. Well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. I don't need to know that shit right now. You're here. Okay. <clears throat> but you should make it fun. Well, okay? the first aid kit that I ordered didn't I fucking come in hate yet. you, fucking Asian dad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jesus. I don't want to learn with you anymore. You suck. Are you serious? Yes. All right. Next time. Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Now I'm, now I'm discouraged. You didn't empower me, so I feel discouraged oh, no, this, and I feel like I'm going to die. The first scenario is never to empower. It's never ever to empower. No, the, this teaching process this is first, to empower. The first step of teaching is never to empower. Okay, everyone, if you ever want to learn from Bart, don't do it. He's the worst. No, never. <laughs> never ever. Because for me, it's this is how I work when, when I, at least is how I learn. As soon as I start, throw me in the ring let me spar throw me in the pool let me let me drown yeah because when i'm drowning i will know exactly what i'm already missing so when i take my first class i'm paying extra attention to the things that i'm missing versus someone just giving me okay step one you have to do a through f i'm like uh, i don't care i never drowned before so I'm just gonna give you a slight drowning and then see how how you how you. Okay, well, yeah. Um. So then, if he's gasping for air, fuck. I don't know. I don't. I I don't know what I would do. I would. I I think I'm gonna start doing shit that I see in the movies. You know, like I'd probably start pounding his chest. Maybe he might have something blocking. I have no idea. No idea at all whatsoever. So that's awesome. Uh, you actually did really good. I set you up for failure, of course, but you did really really good because the first thing is to stop the bleeding. And what's crazy is that's kind of a uh, counter to what I learned in the Boy Scouts. Because in the Boy Scouts back in those days, it's ABCs, which it starts with airway. So you would think like, wait, if someone's choking uh, and they're also bleeding, you would think that it had to airway issue first. Let yeah. me let this fool breathe before yeah. I stop the bleeding. But um, all of those instances when those people were brought to MASH and they're trying to get them to there, they actually bled out. They had, they were able to breathe, but they bled out before they got to the hospital. So stopping the bleeding is the number one most important thing. And then I think you're in the right track where you're looking for a tourniquet or trying to make That's a, the word. Trying to make a tourniquet. You knew what word I was trying to say and you called it glow sticks. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay. So, you're, so you're, what you want to do is you, you want to have a tourniquet. And so, but the first thing before you even apply the tourniquet, you want to stop the bleeding. And so in our bodies, we have... Um, four main arteries that bleed like a mofo. You have your femoral artery, which runs along the femur right here, right where your uh, groin is. Would that be affected? Be it, so it runs there and if his leg is severed, does that, is that running through his leg too? Yeah, so it's running to, it's running all the way to the point where it's severed. Oh crap. And then so, and there's also your brachial artery, which is on the inside of both of your arms. So if it's anything in the leg, you want to stop the bleeding as high up on the thigh as possible. Oh. So that I, so yeah. it stops the bleeding. So you can, it's almost literally like turning off the drain oh. where you want to put your knee on the inside of their leg and put all your weight on it so that the blood doesn't keep gushing out. Dude, he would have died in my care. 
Yeah, because if uh, multiple times, because I was gonna put it on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, right here is if if you don't stop the bleeding and turn the faucet off, so to speak, you can put infinite amounts of cotton, clothes, gauze. It's just gonna it's keep. gonna keep soaking it. Cause but you have to turn it off. So that's why you got to put your knee on it immediately. Turn that thing off before you even put the tourniquet on. And once you put the tourniquet, how that thing works, it's kind of like a constricting device and you can really crank it and it's going to hurt like crazy. Like we put it on each other, it hurts like shit. Because but it's supposed to, it's supposed to pinch that. It's supposed to constrict it so hard that you, okay. there's no more blood coming to it. And then that way you have enough blood that's still going to be circulating in your okay. body so you don't die. Okay. Yeah. So they, they crank that. Um, does it hurt as much as when we do flossing, not in your mouth, but flossing your muscles? It hurts way more than that. Oh shit. Way, okay. Well that's good to know more. because then I would feel like if I'm flossing for those of you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, um what is the flossing used for? Like to break up scar tissue? Scar tissue, yeah, or circulation recovery. Yeah, like you so it's like this like rubber band, like think of a rubber band material, but then it's in a straight line and you just tie you keep cranking Crank it. it. Yeah. Uh, around whatever affected area you have, and then it's supposed to break up. Yeah, you move your joint around. Yeah, like and it you, hurts so bad. You feel like your skin's gonna tear and your muscles are gonna like, oh, oh. hello. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it feels like you're gonna like go, like sever your body part off. Okay. So yeah, it's supposed to be stronger than that? Yeah, way Holy more. Holy fuck, and, I don't even know if I'm strong yeah, enough. And, Cause and, that's, a, with the, that's already elastic. Like I would be using like a P, like, my clothes. Yeah, so that's why now, like the number one thing in first aid is tourniquets. Oh. That's the number one thing. So now, uh, you know how like as we go through airports or any public place, we're starting to see more and more AED devices. Yes. I think that's like yes. clear, deep, boom, yeah. right? Now every AED, the new Has policy is gonna have a tourniquet in it. Oh. So when shit and what happens- what does that look like? A tourniquet? Yeah. It's like this um, plastic strap circle thing like this with a stick on it. So you slide that thing on, you can pull the strap tight, then you start cranking the oh, stick. Oh, that is very cool. Yeah, okay, and then cool. it constricts it. So you you wanna put it on them and it's not really about, uh, did I do it tight enough? You use it with vi your yeah, visual the, cues. The blood. So if the blood stops dripping, you're good. good. Yeah, if it's still coming out, no Bad. matter how tight you think it is, you need to crank that thing like crazy. Yeah. So that's can, the- Can that's, you hurt them in that way? Like can oh, you yeah. damage You're gonna shit? hurt them like crazy. You're gonna hurt them like, and you're gonna damage like crazy. But they're still like gonna live. They're gonna live, that's yeah. the thing. So the okay. number one important thing is living because unfortunately the bad part of a tourniquet is if you have it on for more than six hours, your tissue starts dying. Yeah, because there's no blood. So there's a huge possibility if you have it up this high, they're gonna lose not just the knee down, which is blown off in the Better scenario, than their whole body. but they're gonna have your whole hip down, oh gone, my gosh. but they're gonna go home and see their family. So that's the number one key issue is getting people home. That makes me wanna cry Why? from happiness. Okay. Cause they're gonna they go home, to go home and see their family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause you, you know, you'd rather do that. So you, the tissue is gonna die after that long. That, which is why after you crank the tourniquet down, the number one thing is to write the time on it too. Oh. There's actual, actual tab oh, that you cool. put on there. So when the paramedics come, you go, they know. 205, I had it on. So now when they bring them to the hospital, they know how to treat it accordingly. Wow, like, um, like, you know, we all have our flight, fight or flight response. Yeah. Like in a in an emergency situation like that, like to think so logically is like some next level shit. Oh yeah, because like even <laughs> Fuck. even in uh, our class, like we're we're learning lecture, right? And I'm learning it, and I'm I'm pretty good academically, so I'm like, cool, dude, I got this shit. When it was when it came time to practice, it wasn't even a real bang. Our instructor was just like, bang, bang, you're down, you're down. And then when we started moving, my brain started malfunctioning. I'm like, wait, what, what about all those things that was that I learned in class? What, 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 what? It was like, you know, I was doing things left and right and kind of just like you, he would just question me. He'd be like, oh, so you're gonna treat that first? And then I'm like, no. He goes, oh, I'm not saying you're right or wrong. I'm just asking, are you gonna treat that first? Because everything you do, you gotta do with intent. So don't do it because you're guessing. Even if you're doing it wrong, do it intently so that at least what you're, so if you're putting on a tourniquet. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing it all fucked up. Which is cool. <laughs> I'm all massaging his hand, come on, guys. But if you're doing it intently, that's cool. You know, because what you wanna do is like, let's say if you apply the tourniquet, you did it the wrong way, still do it with intent so that when someone comes and asks you, what the hell happened here? You don't go, oh, I massage halfway and I half ass this and I half ass, you go, I fucking really try to crank down on the tourniquet and it won't stop the bleeding. And they're like, but what about his his face? His face is blown off. I don't know, I tried my best with this. So you can at least give them good, definite <laughs> answers. You wanna be deliberate with everything that you're yeah. doing. And so yeah, so that's the, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna crank that down to stop the blood. Cause we actually saw this video of a pig 
of the femoral, mm. the same thing, femoral artery. The surgeon sliced it. And just like a Tarantino movie, this thing is spraying blood out like a hose. Like Tarantino isn't um, exaggerated. Was he knocked out, the pig? I don't know. So they, they it's it's a zoomed in part. Oh. They don't show the pig's face or anything. It's just like a zoomed, because for medical purposes. So they do that. And then at the end of it, you do see the surgeon stop the bleeding. Um, and he sticks it in with a lot of pressure with his finger and really plug that artery. So that's, they're trying to oh. show how much intent you need to have. It's not like, Oh, stop the bleeding. It's like, if you can see the hole, stick your finger in that hole. Like you want to jam it like you're trying to put cork into a wine oh bottle. Oh my God, I hope I'm never in these scenarios because I'm going to fucking faint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so that's- That's, that's the, intense. Yeah. I'm so grateful. I've never been just listening to these stories and I hope you guys listening to this can, can relate, but I'm so grateful for people that are down to do this shit. Yeah, like our paramedics, yes. our, our police officers. If you're a paramedic or in that field, thank you so much. first responders, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> yeah. Continue. And what's crazy is the they have actually more to deal with because unlike these scenarios with a controlled environment, you have people screaming random shit at I'm them all day. I'm fucking stressed right yeah. now. So you, got, so you got this, so you got to apply the pressure, you okay. stop the bleeding, right? Okay. That's step number one because oh if God. not, in three minutes, Dead. this fool's done. Three minutes this fool's, that fast? All the blood gushes does, out, you're does, done. Does height or weight or any of that? It matters, Okay. but... Your femoral artery is straight up like a hose. So you know how your heart beats? Like doo -doo 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 -doo. The, the blood, the video that we watch, the blood is spraying out with the heartbeat. So it's like, tss, tss, tss. it's just oh. straight coming out. Like if, 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 if this leg was blown off, I had a sheet of paper, it will straight up fucking jizz blood on the paper. <laughs> That's how crazy it is. Jizz doesn't go like that, baby. Hey, mine does <laughs> And No, it doesn't. <laughs> Fine. But, it, but it, straight, it straight sprays out like that. So that's number one. So what the acronym that we learned is MARCH. So M starts stands for massive hemorrhaging. So obviously if some fool's not laying on the floor, ah, and you see it's a paper cut, okay, shut the fuck up. That's not massive yeah, hemorrhaging. Yeah, suck it up, you bitch. Yeah. So it's first is massive hemorrhaging. You see if they're bleeding out everywhere. Isn't already hemorrhaging pretty ha massive? Uh, No, it doesn't have to be. Okay. The second one, I think maybe they put the M there to really emphasize. Like, like if, this fool's, psh, psh, if this fool's the blood bleeding, jizzing. yeah. Okay. If this fool's limb is here, like let's say um, it's covered by a blanket, but you know how in the movies you just see blood start that's soaking the crazy. sidewalk? That's massive hemorrhaging, even if you don't see it. What movie did I watch where it was going? Tsh, tsh, sorry, I hit the mic. Tsh, Probably every Tarantino tsh. movie. And now it makes sense because it, it just looks so fake. Cause it was just like spraying out yeah. and it's like shh, shh. what's but with the heartbeat yeah now but yeah now it makes sense yeah so you uh the sec so the the acronym you want to follow is march massive hemorrhaging then the second one is airway so in this scenario if you go and talk to them and they can talk to you their airway is good fine. they're good even if they're gasping for air their airway is cool they and that now they might have a respiratory issue so the next one is r then from respiratory issue, then you go to circulation. So now you check for pulse. So is this guy like, is this guy, uh, does he still have a bar heartbeat? Oh. And, and, you're, and you're checking for pulse in two ways. You're Why not check for, oh, okay, God, I'm gonna wait. Go ahead. What's your question? No, because I'm like, well, pulse means if they're alive or dead or just if it's slowing down. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you're checking for, so there's multiple ways. So uh, if you, you check for the neck and the wrist at the same time. Why? So if they're both beating the same, there's uh, this guy's actually pretty good and the limbs are receiving it. Because the minute someone goes into shock, the body is trying to protect itself and then all the other um, distant pulses would be really low. So if I checked your wrist and I checked your neck and when your wrist is very faint, but your neck is still there on the, oh, hey, this person's in shock. Mm. Wow, the body's fucking amazing. It's fucking amazing. Like I knew it was amazing because I created life, like yeah. women's body create life, but just how it all just kind of like, it's like game time. They they run different plays. Per it's made every, to protect you. That's beautiful. So even your heart, right? It has one main artery that goes down and it splits. It bifurcates into your two brachial arteries. That's sexy, baby. Say that again. Bifurcates. Oh. Yeah. And it goes all the way down to your groin. And once it gets there, oh, yeah. around there, it bifurcates again. Oh my God. Yeah. Is it slow or is it fast? It's pretty slow. Ooh. And then once it gets to your knees, it bifurcates again. Oh my God. Yeah. That's sexy. So, it did, so your, your body comes in pairs so that you can 
lose a leg like and still us, be baby. alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're so yeah, it does. It, it uh, so you have all that. So you yeah, that, the, that's why you get the pulse from two places. So you have the signs, and then you have uh, H, which is you want to treat for hypothermia. So usually mm. when people are in, when people are in shock or something happens, their body sh- loses the ability to keep itself warm. So the second highest Wait, thing. What's the per- what's the point in that? So they don't die. Um. So it 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 lowers the body temperature. Yeah. So like if like uh, <clears throat> let's say I chop your leg off, right? You're bleeding out. You're in shock. You know. You know when someone's like in shock when they're scared, like mm-hmm. the fight or flight, you get clammy hands yeah. and you get all cold. So the why that's so dangerous is the minute you start getting all cold and you have the clammy hand. Um, so there's a thing called the lethal triad where if you start going to acidosis, which means you have too high of CO2 in your bloodstream and you're cold, hypothermia. I have so many questions. Yeah, <laughs> then you, you lose the ability for your blood to coagulate. So it won't heal anymore. So let's say you're hypothermic. Let's say I did stop the bleeding, but you're hypothermic and your blood is starting to uh, get high CO2 levels. When they take you to the hospital, they're gonna put, give you a trans blood transfusion and after doing surgery, and like let's say the surgery is, goes perfectly. They pull matter. all the bullets out. I'm gonna now bleeding. they're waiting for it to clot and your blood's not clotting and you're still gonna keep bleeding on your dead. So that's why it's really important to keep the patient warm. Oh, uh, um, but wait, but why does the body go into hypothermia? Because the shock prevents it from yeah, just the, self-regulating? Yeah, because oh, now, okay. so, cause now your, uh, your body is just trying to survive. Yeah. So it's like, okay, let me warm my like, organs and warm only my head. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So like your body just starts, <clears throat> so even with shock, you'll see like um, a lot of victims in shock, and then this is the part in the class where I was like, oh man, that's kind of sad, but it reminded me of Briggy. Oh, my baby. So like when people are in shock, it's almost like a seizure. You see their limbs pull to the center. Oh. Because when, once they pull to the center, they're like, your whole body's just trying to put all the important things in the middle. And then, the, as I learned. It just, it happens naturally. Yeah, like you'll see oh. people in shock. Like, you know when people get knocked out? Yeah. In the oh, rain? Yeah. You know how they, they go, go like this and their arms just come in? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like that. I'm like, oh shit. So now I recognize We're fucking shock. aliens, dude. Yeah, so you go like that. And then it gets pulled in. Oh my brig. Why'd it, you bring her up? No, because like, you know, like that's what I'm saying. Like these things are so important because maybe I could have saved Briggy's life. Oh, don't say that. Like these things are so important because now I understand how life works. I'm like, oh shit, I could have done this. I could have done <clears> that. <throat> so they even make tourniquets for dogs and oh animals. Oh my god, it's so cute. You know? So I'm like, oh shoot. Like now that I know these things, I'm like, yeah, I, I know the nurse is recommending me not to pick Briggy up because she could bite me or she could do whatever. Um, but sometimes if the ambulance, like, I'm like, unfortunately they don't have dog ambulances. So I wish they did. That'd be so fucking cute. Exactly. If there was dog ambulance and I was able to call another version of 911, Briggy could have been saved. Or if I would have known about this class, I could probably stuff her mouth with, um, a sponge or a water bottle. So I'm not scared of getting bit. And then I would just take her in my truck and immediately go to an animal urgent care and they can get a shot. You know, Aww. and it maybe calm her down. So I'm just like, man, this is this stuff's really good because it has real life application. Yeah. But let me hold your thought for a quick second because I'm going to introduce our next sponsor. Okay. Our second sponsor is Manscaped. And you guys know I love Manscaped. No, I love Manscaped. She <laughs> loves Manscaped because it keeps me nice and clean. And now they have their new and improved lawnmower 3.0. I love but their what names. Is, what is Manscaped? So Manscaped for is... For everyone that doesn't know. Uh, for men's below the belt grooming. Hell yeah. That's what I love. Yeah. So everything from taking care of all those nasty hairs. They even got lotions and toner. And fragrances. Yeah, fragrances. They even have boxers. Like all the stuff to keep your downstairs like a Impeccable. professional athlete like it needs to be. You An know athlete. what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. An Olympic athlete. Yeah. So they got this new, uh, re- they got this new replacement blade and it's new and improved skin safe technology. So their stuff's already really good. And this one, they're completely new. I just got the package. I'm going to use it uh, tonight. Or the upgraded package. The upgraded package. And the battery will last up to 90 minutes. So if you want to be an artist and put designs on your pubes, you, you have a 90 minutes to do it. Or you can start from your eyebrows all the way down. Yeah, you can shave everything. You can use all that stuff. But um, for me personally, I like it being clean down there, especially now that I'm running so much. Before when I have pubes, what's interesting is your it acts like a, like a sweatband. So I'll be sweating and my pubes collect it. And then my shorts will be all dry, except there's a wet spot right above my nuts because it's actually collecting all the sweat. Now I don't have that anymore. 
Um, so make sure you go to manscaped.com and use the code BEAW, something special for our listeners, to get 20% off Ooh. free shipping. 20% off. Oh, 20% off plus free shipping. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Get 20% off and free shipping with code BEAW. That's for all of our Bell listeners at manscaped.com. Ooh, I love it. And yeah, no, there's no one out there that's going to be like, wow, you're too groomed. Like, do it for yourself. Do it for your partner. And it makes your dick look bigger, too. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bring it back. Yeah, um, so in this class, I was kind of getting watery. I took I was thinking about Briggy. Oh, that's fucking cute. Um, okay, so that's March. Yeah. So that's um, um, a massive hemorrhaging. Yep. Um, M-A-A -A is... Uh, <laughs> Airways, airway, um, respiratory, mm -hmm. um, uh, circulation, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, H is uh, hypothermia. Hypothermia and head injuries. Oh, I didn't get the, we didn't get to the head injury. Yeah, head so injuries. like, so um, like I even got tricked. One of our scenarios was uh, uh, a guy comes in, goes boom, and he was like, he gets shot in the head, mm. but no brains come out half the class immediately goes to bandaging the head because that's what's common sense. So I protect the head. And then he goes, wait, why'd you guys do that? That's H, that's at the bottom. Did you check for M? Did you check for A? Did you check for R? And it has to be in that it order. It has to be. If you want to oh. save someone's life, you go in that order. But you can check off fast. You can go, okay, no M, no A, no R, no C. Okay, now we bandaged the head. But the head, because we're so used to it, like seeing that as so well, because important. Because that's your, that and your fucking, well, I guess there's a lot of life, life yeah. forces. Yeah. But if it is hemorrhaging, like the brains are out and there is blood, yeah, that's, that's an M now. So it's cool to like run through all these scenarios that the teacher threw at us so we can see how important the M through H is. And then when you're done, you go back to M. You keep going cyclically until the paramedics or the right people get there. Damn. Yeah, you constantly have to go through it because there's just so many things that like you could put a tourniquet on someone and like, let's say the car is about to blow up. So you're like, I got to drag them to safety. But now you drag them, moved. the tourniquet moves. Yes, yeah, so you got to recheck everything. And then when I talk about airway, I guess one of the biggest questions is like, what's the difference between airway and respiration? So airway is um, like the physical clogging. Air. Oh, so you know, like if you're if some people they're they um, they're hurt and they're like like that, they're choking, they're literally choking on themselves on their tongue or on their neck or whatever. So you want to like sit them up or something? No, you want to lay them down. Oh, so you want to lay people down and then tilt their chin up as much as you can. Oh, okay, okay. And if their tongue's in the way, you want to scoop it out. And they even have in these little first aid kits that I bought for our, our house now, I actually bought, I bought, I think four, four of them, three full size ones. We should ones. contact these people and see if they'll like sponsor us. Maybe. So everyone else listening could get yeah. some and we should share with them too. Yeah, this is all cool. life saving stuff. Yeah. So I, I bought four of them. I bought three full size ones and one small one that I can keep on my backpack. But the three full size one, one I'm going to put on my gun range belt because shit happens when you go to the shooting range. The other one I'll put- Is that small? Yeah. It's like this small. Oh, so you put it like on the back? On the back. And there's tons of shit in there. So there's that. And then I'm going to put one uh, at home, like in our kitchen area. So we all have access to it. I'm going to put one in my car and then I have a small little one that I'm going to just keep in my backpack in case anything happens. But you can never have too many tourniquets. <laughs> you have so many. I think you have more life saving and life taking devices in your backpack than you do actual like work <laughs> you, you have like a gun you have a knife you have a first aid kit I have a flashlight too <laughs> a fucking flashlight batteries <laughs> you're funny <laughs> you have me. like protein allergy medicine <laughs> i'm ready i got my inhaler in there i got I'm, I'm ready for all kinds of stuff do you have condoms you know, we don't use condoms. <laughs> no baby number two yet, though. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, you got to run through Damn. that. So, so airway I don't know is, anything, baby. Yeah. Fuck. But now you do. Now you know March. So, you could at least go through that. Where yeah, a, well, I know it, but I'm not going to know exactly what it do. I mean, at least I can stop massive hemorrhaging now. Yeah. Who knows? Like, Just think about this. <sighs> when there's massive hemorrhaging, there's four main arteries. Put a knee on that motherfucker and well, stop it. I only it. know one. So, you know the femoral artery. That's two. Oh, yeah, baby. Do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the brachial artery here and here. Like what, right, I don't right know inside. where you're pointing. In your armpit? Uh, right where the inside of the arm is. Oh, here. Yeah. So you know the part, if I, if I squeeze your arm right there, it's going to hurt like shit. Yeah, that's, that's one? That's exactly where it is. Oh, okay. So you stop the so bleeding one, there. one, two, three, three, four? Three, four, yeah. Oh, easy peasy. Yeah, easy peasy. Those are the main ones. So you... you just... just 
my heart's racing right now. Really? Yeah, just like imagining me in that in a scenario where it's like life and death for somebody, regardless yeah. if I have relation with them or not. I'm I'm like, oh my god, I, I don't their life are in my it's in my hands. Yeah, I'm scared. And what's crazy is uh, the you actually want to move slowly. What do you when, mean? So in the military, there's a thing called slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Oh, oh yes, I agree with that. Because if you move fast, it's crazy. You're gonna like, fuck like up. I went one where I went my fastest, and what they make it, they make so the, some of the dressings are so dummy proof. Where now the packaging, there's like twelve slits around it. So no matter where you go, you can You're grab it, you can rip it open, Smart. take it out, right? I so love that. And they even have like a red arrow on some of them to point out. So because at nighttime, sometimes you don't see the slits. Yeah. My dumb ass, because I was going so fucking fast, couldn't I couldn't one. even find one. And then when I just would have slowed down, like I couldn't find one and you turn into like this freaking like little dummy where yeah. I was even gonna put it in my mouth and try to open it. And it was just like, wait, if I slow down, okay, here's a slit. Slow down, move fast. Yeah, slow, smooth, smooth is fast. Oh, slow, smooth, smooth is fast. I learned that in, uh, when I was 23, 24. Yeah. Um, because, so I had this, so I was living with uh, my roommates, all girls at the time, and one of them moved very slowly, but like precisely, and she like would do everything neatly. And I and I would observe her a lot, and I'm like, wow, that's like kind of slow. I'm like, come on, fucking move faster. But she would do it correctly and just once. Yeah. And I remember specifically uh, when she would wash dishes or whatever, like nothing would ever break with me because I like moving fast, and I'm like, let's fucking go, let's get this shit done because I want to do fun stuff. This, su this stuff sucks. I would try to wash shit really fast, and in one of those, I was washing a glass, and I'm just Broke doing it. this, and I shattered it. And I have to drive to the store and then buy another glass, and you got add time. Well, for I your just think the fact time. that I shattered it was like. Bitch, slow the fuck down. Mm -hmm. Like, do it right, slow down. And ever since that moment, I'm like, oh man, I need to really slow everything down. Yeah. So yeah, I'm glad you're like reinforcing something that I kind of like. Yeah. Came up, came to my own mind. Yeah. So like, when shit happens, it's okay to go, and then move slow and deliberate, and then that way you're actually moving fast and you don't have to retrace steps. Yeah. So the, the what I was trying to go, get at was the two difference between airway and Respiration airway is the physical blockage, tilting the chin, clearing the mouth. And in those first aid kits that are made for like t a tactical trauma, they have this thing called a uh, uh, NPA. It's called, I think it's like nasopharyngeal apparatus, whatever. So you stick it in their nose. Oh Lord. You it's a tube that you stick in their nose. <laughs> and even if they pass out on themselves, they can continue breathing, which is awesome. Uh, how does that work? So it, it goes into their nose. Does it just, you just feed it in there and you it just, just goes, it, well, it just, it just curves. Where to go? Yeah, you just okay. curves it. You feed it in, you feed oh. it straight down like this, like perpendicular to the face. I'm not gonna up, faint not right down, now. But perpendicular and it goes straight in. And then- uh, It can go up on its own? Well, because behind the nose, you have all kinds of cavities. You have like sinuses, you have all that. So you want to put it in the right areas. You're not trying to like be an Egyptian and stick it in their brain. You're going straight down, goes down in this way. And, <laughs> Being uh, Egyptian, that's so specific. What does that mean? Cause you know the Egyptians, they used to uh, stick utensils up the nose to pull the brains out when they mum mummify things? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I thought it was common knowledge. <laughs> it probably is, but <laughs> I can't think of shit right now. I'm just imagining, I'm visualizing everything you're telling me and I'm queasy as fuck. Really? Oh shit. <sighs> you might need this class. But they, they stick it in the no, nose. No, you're gonna need to practice on me pretty soon because I'm about to faint. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, so that's not M. So you're already in good shape. Well, you don't know if I faint, I might hit my head on the fucking corner of this glass table. Okay, fine, we'll see. And then so yeah, you have so the airway is just the physical blockage okay. that thing clears it for you, and it's actually good because uh, that way when you transport them, if they move, they have that tube down there. You're gonna it's gonna ensure that they're breathing and their airways open. The respiratory part, this is the part that's crazy because. Um, you're checking to see if their lungs are inflating at the same time, because if not, if one is going up and the other one isn't moving, then they might have a collapsed lung. And we also learned how to treat for that, which is pretty damn cool. Is it very graphic? Um, I'm not gonna explain the graphic parts to you. Like fucking, so I have this thing with my ribs. Yeah. You know, like if you press it too much, I'm like, ah, it's gonna break. And I'm sure it's not gonna break. It's just this, uh, what is it called? A fear, irrational fear yeah. of mine. And yeah. it just feels crazy. Yeah. So I'm just imagining you fucking having to like go in the ribs and I'm like, oh. Oh, speaking of that. Oh God. <laughs> when your bowels come out, do you know what you're supposed to do? when they come out naturally or in state of a shock? No, like let's say a bear fucking scratched you in the stomach and then your, your oh, intestines what the come fuck? out. No, of course I don't know what to do. What the well, fuck? What do you think your common sense answer is? Pick it up. 
Do you put it back in? Um, okay, now that you asked that way, probably not. Yeah, you're not supposed to. Because in class, <laughs> I was like, stuff that shit back in, bro. No, because I feel like it's all like, contaminated no, exactly. and all fucked up. It's contaminated. So once that part is contaminated, you put that in and it's infected, you have a world of problems, especially since your bowels carry your shit. Yeah. So now the shit is supposed to stay in the bowels, not outside of the bowels, in your cavity. And that's when it's going to have problems. So you actually want people to, you want to keep the bowels out and maybe you could even tape it down. But at least that way, when they arrive at the hospital, they know what parts of the bowels they have to disinfect. <laughs> I'm never leaving my house. <laughs> but you know what's cool about this is there's people on the field that get, um, <laughs> that get, get hurt. But if you take care of M and you take care of A and you take care of R, and you take care of C, right? And you take care of H, all those are taken care of. Their bowels can be out and there are soldiers that have walked themselves into the operating room holding their own bowels because you know what? They're still alive. So that's just the crazy part where there's a lot of things that look, oh my God, to the, to the normal eye and you start addressing that, but that's actually not that important. Like there's, uh, our instructor is telling us for some reason, when you, when your arm is bent the wrong way oh. or there's a double elbow, like you have a random elbow here now and it's bending this way. People get so fixated on that, that they're not, they want to put that back in. They're like, yeah, they're not paying attention. There. They're not paying attention to all the other stuff. People can carry in their broken arm if all the other stuffs are taken care of. Cool, huh? I hope I remember all this stuff. I got to listen to this podcast again. <laughs> yeah, you, you, for sure you're not. Because I know I'm not, I took a two day class. And it's pretty intensive. I'm still not going to. He was like, honestly, like every, every week, just take the first aid kit out and fiddle with it and understand the steps. He's like, that's, that's like the best way to like stay. Familiarize yourself stay with updated, it. Stay updated, yeah. And yeah, know, what to, and it know what to do. But I, I know how to treat like a, a gun wound to the lungs someone has a because like there's this thing called a needle decompression yeah so you have to get there's a airtight seal that you put on so that when they're breathing it's not blood gushing out you seal it and you seal the back you look for exit wound and then if you see uh, if there's three symptoms where it's jugular distension which is you see a, a bulging vein and then um and then if they have a unilateral lies uh rise and fall of the chest more than likely they have like a collapsed lung so now you have to release the pressure and then so you have to get this needle and you have to find the third clavicle is that the is that what rib. they did is that what they did in pulp fiction no no that's a uh epi pen oh that's different. okay i didn't know so that. This, this one you find the clavicle and you go down to the third rib and you find the space intercostal clavicle? space okay here yeah so one it's so like right here let me see so that that's your clavicle so that's your clavicle that's your first rib that's your second right oh. there you go like this Damn, and you go, I need to roll out or and you something. go and you go, no, no, that's normal. So you be tight here. No, for you to feel like that. No, it's tight. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So do you stick the needle in there and you, you'll hear it. <gasps> and now the guy can breathe Why, what's again. What's here? What's here? So, um, what your lung looks like is actually like, they're not the lima beans shape. <laughs> they are, <laughs> but it's actually like a sack within a sack. Oh, and then so in, with the two, so your lungs, and then in this thing called the pleural cavity or the pleural membrane. In the you're so cute. Why? I don't know. I like when you know all this I'm stuff. Fine. So in the pleural membrane and uh -huh. the and the lungs, there's this negative pressure that causes it to be stuck together, right? Mm. So as it's breathing, it goes in and out like this. But the minute there's a puncture and there's a leakage and there's not that pressure built up anymore, now it's this thing stays a bag and your lung is just kind of going like this. Oh. So every breath you take, it actually gets smaller and smaller. I know you're thinking of the song. <laughs> <laughs> every move you make. And you, keep, yeah, and you start dying like that. So what you're doing is now you have all this pressure built up. I love you. And then this pleural membrane starts getting more inflated. You want to go pop it pss, so it can go back down and now it can breathe together again. <laughs> I love that you have ADHD because you can go along with my ride. Fine. <laughs> you're like, there's this sack within a sack. I know you're thinking of the song, but then what has to happen because there's <laughs> negative. <laughs> yeah. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, let me tell you one piece of information. No, no, no. You got to wait. Okay. Because we have our final sponsor and then you can tell me all the information you want. <laughs> okay. So hold your horses, baby. Okay. And special thanks to our final sponsor um, that I'm absolutely stoked that still loves us so much. Uh, and this is Skillshare. This is an online learning community that I absolutely love. You guys have heard us talk about it in the past. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's an online um, learning community that offers a membership with meaning, uh, meaning that you can learn a lot, a lot of different skill sets. Um, 
online at your own pace from a not accredited but uh from um what's the word uh like like professionals like like authority they yeah like uh, authorities that have actually accomplished things yeah um you're not learning from like joe schmoes you know like these are people that have um like really up their credentials from companies you heard of too like vimeo stance like companies that you're like oh cool not just hey i'm from freaking red leaf automotives and you're like wait what it's oh like, i love red leaf though i'm just I kidding know. i don't know who yeah that they're is. actually from like legit companies that are doing really cool stuff and it's someone from them yeah so um if you want to learn uh creative writing if you want to do um better photography if you want to learn how to market yourself better web design um art decor like all of these awesome fun creative classes even for like they even have like uh some business and entrepreneurial classes so that's really cool and again you learn at your own pace for me personally if you guys haven't been following me on instagram please do so it's geo underscore antoinette or bart kwan um but i'm bringing myself up because i've been just upping my what is it my girly side if you will and i'm taking more um more like beauty and fashion photos. And I wanted to up my iPhone photography skills and they had a photo skill, I mean, a, a class specifically for iPhone photography. Like there's so many features that an iPhone camera comes with that I was already underutilizing that I didn't oh. even know existed. Yeah. So just knowing these tips and tricks and every class is different. Like some of them will be like several courses. Uh, some of them will be 13 minutes. Others will be like an hour. So depending on what it is that you're trying to learn there, it's all different. So I love it. You can check it at any time that you want to. You can check out anytime you want to. And for you guys that are listening right now, um, you guys are going to get two free months, y'all. Like two free months. That's 60 days to change your life. Increase your skill set. Uh, go to Skillshare.com slash bail. That's B-E-A-W. That's Skillshare.com slash bears for two whole months of unlimited classes to thousands of classes uh, for free. Unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. I said that's so weird. Sorry. Um, yeah. Skillshare.com slash B-E-A-W. So this is oh, a but there was, I'm just kidding. So this is the crazy part. Yeah. The, the reason why I said like that's normal when I touched you then you're like this. In the heaviest form of sedation, uh, I think it's like level four where this person is completely out. You inject them with all these anesthesia. They're fucking out like a motherfucker. You could slap them in the face. You can put their hand in hot water and they're not going to wake up. When you poke them here, they're going to feel they'll it. They'll still wince. They won't feel it, but they'll wince. Isn't Why? that crazy? Why? Um, he was just saying it's a mammalian response where like as a, as, as a mammal, your lungs and your heart is so important to you that your body oh. naturally wants to defend. Damn. Yeah. So it has an even. When body is dope. It's fucking dope. Yeah. God, you, I got to eat better. Yeah. I got to take care of my body more. It's, it's really cool. Well, I mean, I don't eat fucked up. Yeah, it's like your, your body's actually extremely magical and the nothing can heal better than your body on its own. Wow. So everything that you're trying to do is just trying to get it, your body to clot on its own, build tissue on its own to help it heal on its yeah, own. Yeah, you may or may not know this, um, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Yeah. Um, what happens if a person's like on prescription drugs and stuff? Is it like a different... Do you treat things differently? Was that even covered? Um, so that's not even your concern. You just run through March. Oh, because I just figured like certain things might like, I don't know. Because you know how like it blocks either feelers or sensors or like it just kind of alters your just Could natural be. state. If this fool's bleeding out, that's the number one thing you're okay. doing. That's number one thing you're doing. You're applying a tourniquet and you're trying to get that bleeding to stop. That's like your number one thing. You just run through March. Uh, and that's just, uh, that's like tactical field care. That's not even Kazavac. Kazavac is casualty evacuation. So that's just trying to stabilize the motherfucker. So there's actually three main phases. The first one is called um, care under fire. So when there's still a threat, like there's a bear, there's a burning vehicle that's gonna explode. You, someone just got shot or there's more bad guys coming. The only thing you can do at that time is M. Is well, you apply the hasty tourniquet, so it's not even a good one. Which hasty meaning later you got to redo it. You slap that bad boy on, and this when you drag him out, or you throw him on your shoulder, and you run, or you get out of danger's way, so that you can be under tactical field care, where you can kind of do all those things. Then when you're able to uninterrupted get this guy through March, and this guy is not um, in like super red alert zone now. Now you can call nine one one, which is casualty evacuation, and try to get this guy out of here damn or if you have no service and there's no wi-fi 
Get now's the time back. you throw them on the truck or you throw them inside a car and you and that's why like the whole mpa thing is important because uh you could put them in the passenger seat and they could be like choking on themselves but if you have the airway cleared and you stick that tube and they're good but you said they should be laying down they should never be sitting you if, if you can i mean it's there's always ideal situations but there's a lot of times you got to do weird shit. uh and why do you want to lay them down versus so laying them down and if you have someone next to them is just because you're constantly trying to run through march so like let's say it's you and me and someone else is hurt ideally if i could find a van a minivan then when this person is laying down in the back of the minivan, I could put blankets over him, treat him for hypothermia. You could sit right next to him and then watch everything and constantly be engaged. If this person is sitting in a chair, no one's sitting in a chair next to him. You know, it's just, it's just- oh, uh, So the position in which they're in doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Uh, under tactical field care, it's just the easiest when they're laying down. Oh, okay. Like, cause if there's a, a exit wound from a bullet wound, you can roll them over. You can manipulate your casualty to, to, to put, slap the tourniquet on, or if they have a broken bone, you need to apply a splint. It's easier to do all of those things. That's why even in, the, in medicine, people are carried in a stretcher, you know, like this guy's flat. Like it's just, it's just easier. I just easier thought to, like they were like, uh, this is the best position for n no blockage or no choking or no whatever. Yeah, just for everything. So oh, if okay. you can keep them flat, that's awesome. But sometimes you can't. Yeah. You know, and then sometimes, and it also depends on the victim too. Like if the victim is, um, let's say this guy's talking, he's conscious, cool, this guy's awesome, but he's still bleeding out, then maybe the biggest thing now is just hypothermia. Maybe you throw him in the passenger seat and crank the heater up. You know, so it all it all depends. It all depends on how you assess the situation. Because if this guy's talking, he's conscious, his airway's good, he doesn't have any uh, lung wounds or anything like that, like, cool, now I just need to make sure he doesn't bleed, bleed out and I got to keep him warm. And then we're good. Maybe I would throw them in the passenger seat, you know, if, if, especially if I'm just by myself. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Because in the back, you don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. So it, it, it all, it all depends. Wow. But you want to run through March over and over again. I'm so unprepared. Why wouldn't they offer this like public schools and stuff? Or even a basic version of it. I think it'd be is cool. so good. Yeah. There's like a lot or of Maybe things. they do. I don't know. I nah, haven't been to school in a minute. I mean, I wish they had like just basic taxes, basic first aid, ba like some. Should we start a school? That'd be cool. Just some basic like things like everyone should know how to do. Yeah, like like clean your house. Did you remember in class, like in sixth grade or fifth grade, they teach you how like if you get thrown in a trunk, what's the easiest way to get out of it? No. Oh, okay. We didn't get that. So like for like I thought that stuff. Now was I good. know after this you kick out a the backlight. Well now yeah, all what the, are the lights. Now all the cars are equipped with uh ways to open them yeah, from yeah, the yeah. inside now. Yeah. But so, if it's so an older car, yeah, you kick out the lights. Yeah. So that that was that was cool to just know. But I think like yeah, like having a baseline class just for survival, I think would be really good. And oh yeah, and the last thing with the nine one one with the Kazavac. Uh, when you get on the phone with them. Oh yeah, that one's important. You want to say three main things and try to keep the, oh my God, someone, the, 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 like, oh, I'm in pain. Like all the unnecessary information, because the 911 operators are trying to help you. And so when they keep asking you the same question over and over again, and you're going, wait, I thought I told you, that means you're not telling them the information that right, they need. Right, because they're not dumb. Yeah. They're actually calm. Yeah, so... You need to tell them first is uh name your location. Oh, location, not name. No, they don't give a fuck. Why no. would I say name? <laughs> so location first, not just address, but am I upstairs, downstairs? Am I oriented to the south? So the in north, addition to, to the, the address, yeah. Yeah. So the location, yeah, like the actual. Am I on top of a mountain? Like yeah. behind a tree? Like what? The more stuff that you can give them, the better. Um, like let's say, hey, I live on the second floor, but there is a there's a dog there's stairs something. behind me. Oh, okay. So they can go, oh, shoot, okay, if there's a burn, if the front door is burning on fire, we'll enter through the top floor. Like, however they, you can help them get to you, yeah. the best. Okay. That's the best. Uh, second one is number of patients and okay. what their injuries are. That's still number two. That's number two. Okay. So your name isn't even that important right now. Because that is how they're going to send people to come help you. So, um, like, if there is a active shooter and he shot three people, they're going to send the cops and the fire department and the paramedics because there's a bad guy they have to take out. So they're gonna make sure that the cops get there first and yeah. prioritize the safety. Yeah. But if it's a snake bite, they don't yeah, have they to, don't need the, cops. the cops will still show up later, but at least they'll be able to prioritize who to get there, you know? Yeah. And then they'll be able to dispatch which one of you guys have like a venom kit or whatever, and they'll get that guy to you. So the more information about the patients, the number of patients, what the casualties are, the better. Then last is um, your call sign, which is your name, 
how can they contact you? Hey, my phone's about to die. Call this number or I'm next to this landline. I'm, uh, this emergency happened at the Domino's on whatever and whatever. Yeah. Call that. And, and then uh, that way they know how to contact you if anything else happens. But um, if you're able to just tell them all of those, hey, uh, location, I'm at the Domino's on 3rd and 5th and we're in the kitchen and the kitchen exploded and uh, you're able to give them that and the kitchen is, is in the back and then there's a direct access from the back door. Now they know how to get to you and they don't have to waste their time going through the front. Two, we have two cooks. They're both, so the cooks is actually unnecessary information. Two people that um, have taken chest wounds with burning metal objects. One is um, conscious and he's able to talk. One's unconscious. And then three, call the Domino's number that, and you hang up and you never talk to them again. That's already more than enough information for them to come and really do their job really good. Ooh, this so, is all really good information. Yeah, three things. Wow, this is really good information. It's super eye-opening. I don't know shit. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Damn, you know so much now. Now I do, which is really cool. It, but it was cool to even see in my class, like we had paramedics, we had firefighters, and even for them, they were learning. And there's a British Special Forces guy, which he knew a lot, but um, he he was like, like, so you run March over and over again. And this guy, man, he was, you could just see him on the go like after he did march two or three times the next thing he goes because you also want to employ everyone around you to get become a team effort the last thing you want is this is this is unfortunate but when shit happens most people will pull out their cell phones before they help oh everyone's trying to get a video try to get a stupid video so you want to employ people so people don't feel disconnected you go you you do this you you do this so the the british guy he was like you give me a pencil and paper he didn't say it like that no, he said, you give me pencil and paper. Yeah. And then he was telling him, telling them, uh, running through the whole march with them and telling them to write it down. So I've put applied a tourniquet here. I've put a chest seal here. We've got MPA in him. We've got a need needle decompression. I've run this. This guy has a broken leg. And he told them all of that stuff. So now when the paramedics come, he doesn't have to tell him. He has his paper and he'll slap it on the patient and send it to the Amazing. parent. Amazing. So this guy, he already what knew. What a stud. Yeah, he, was, he, just, he just knew like, like, cause even our instructor, he was like, that guy is the man because that's he's like if I if if I was a real medic I would have to write that anyways because you know he like if your if your casualty is being evacuated by the helicopter you ain't saying shit because you can't hear anything hey he has a tourniquet you just have to have it written down so he was already thinking on the next level I ran march three times this guy looks stable how can I help the other person save this life let me write all this stuff down just tape it on this motherfucker and send him away. Can we be his friend and just be around him all the time? <laughs> and just hang out with him yeah, in, just in, in case. England. In England. Yeah, wherever he is, we just we're next to him always. And then when something yeah. happens, then we're like, we we're like, whatever, I got shot. I'm chilling. I got my British buddy. Yeah. No, he yeah. was he was Damn, dope. What really a stud. Like yeah. I mean, because he's seen some shit. He's seen some Oh him. yeah. Oh yeah. They have. So for him, it's he's this is not a new this is not a new rodeo. Yeah. Damn. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, for listening. We should do like drills at home. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. And for everyone listening out there, if you guys are like interested in this stuff, um, let us know and we'll continue to do more in depth. It'll mainly be Bart doing it and quizzing me on it. But hey, we're all learning together. And yeah. if this is something that interests you guys, let us know in the comments and then we'll continue to do this or we'll just make an additional video or whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of these classes. You can find them. Um, the one that I took was with Sheepdog Response, Tim Kennedy's company. Sheepdog? Sheepdog Response, okay. Tim Kennedy's company. And it was his is called TRCC. Um, there's Dark Angel Medical that teaches this. Uh, I believe Fieldcraft Survival teaches this. There's another company that I took a shooting classroom called Courses of Action. They might be offering this, but there's a bunch of these like tactical companies that help you learn how to shoot or even situational awareness. Are you being followed when you're coming home from the grocery store? Um, and then also Damn. first aid. There's a lot of like a lot of really good tactical knowledge that I think would really help just all around just just by you knowing it. And all these guys are great instructors, great teachers, but a lot of them former special operations people. So it's it's uh, not just theory, it's applied and used knowledge. I love it. So thank you to all our sponsors. Make sure to check them out. Uh, that's Best Fiends. Go to the App Store or Google. Um, uh, Google Play. Google Play and download that game. It's for a lot free, of fun. Free download. Absolutely free. A lot of fun. Super cute for all ages. Um, go to Manscaped dot com slash Shave your nuts. yep to clean that up for 20 percent off i won't even be surprised if you're a girl and you could use it oh i should try it yeah i'll report back you guys uh maybe we shouldn't share the same one but Why? whatever okay all right we, we already, already bumping uglies all the time anyways <laughs> mine's pretty <laughs> and then uh last but not least skillshare um that skillshare.com slash bear for two whole months of unlimited classes 
So unlimited access to all classes. So check them out. Thank you guys so much for listening. See you guys next week. Bye.